a backwards glance at fashion in the studio with Paris's emerging artists and a world tour of contemporary arts at the Venice Biennale. That's all coming up in today's show. Well, we're starting off with the world of cinema as the Mostra kicks off in Venice. It's the world's oldest film festival and perhaps the most picturesque setting for a movie meet. But Venice's 76th International Film Festival is not without some controversy. Accused of lagging behind when it comes to representing female filmmakers, the event's also been criticised for screening Roman Polanski's latest film due to the director's conviction for statutory rape dating back to the 1970s. Well, questioned over the issue, the jury president, Lucretia Martel, said she'd agreed to attend the premiere of Polanski's film, despite some reservations. She says the debate is one of the major conversations of our times. Let's hear from her. I can't place myself above all the judicial issues that still revolve around him, but I can show solidarity to the victim, for whom, in her own words, the case is closed. But I think it's right for Mr. Polanski's film to be screening at this festival, because it is a dialogue that we need. And what better place than this to embark on that journey? We're moving to fashion now, and in these selfie-obsessed times, the back of any outfit is not something you see very often. Well, here in Paris, an exhibition is hoping to turn our heads 180 degrees to get a new perspective. The show is called Backside Fashion from Behind, and it examines how our approach to the back has evolved and how that reflects changing social attitudes. The pieces on display range from haute couture gowns to uniforms and straitjackets, and the show is a partnership between the Palais Galliera and the Musée Bordel, with Antoine Bordel's sculptures on display alongside the garments. Ellen Gainsford reports. It's the only part of our body that others can see better than us. And how much we choose to conceal or reveal it can speak volumes. The back is the flattest surface of our body and the only part of our body that our arms cannot cover. So fashion uh, takes advantage of these limits uh, by um, printing um, patterns or messages um, during all 20th century. The back can be our own personal billboard. We can brand ourselves or express things we may be afraid to say out loud. We can use the back to express many different things, as it's a flat surface. You can add volume or messages or show your sexuality. I think the back is very important. It's true that from the front you can see the face, but the back is more subtle. We can't see people looking at our backs. It can show a more subtle kind of femininity. Women's backs are often treated differently to men's. Enclosed in corsets and laces, or buttoned to the nape. Garments that require assistance to put on and take off. In the 1920s and 30s, the back was exposed in fashion for the first time. Fast forward to the 1990s and beyond, and the back can be subtly erotic or blatantly bondage. It can push our standards of beauty, as with this avant-garde Recoens piece, or these comme des garçons ensemble, set alongside the sculptures of Antoine Bordel. The outfits in this exhibition will have you looking over your shoulder. Next, we're taking a look behind the scenes of the world of visual arts here in Paris. La Villa Belleville is a cultural centre run by the city. Located in a former factory, it encourages emerging artists to develop their projects. The centre's also managed to forge social links with residents of the neighbourhood. France 24's Lucie Barbazange and Brian Quinn went to check it out. Nestled at the end of an alley in Paris's 20th arrondissement, in a former factory, lies the artist's residence known as the Villa Belleville. 
Residents are selected based on their portfolios, each one getting a workshop for three to six months. A major stroke of luck for Alexia Chevrolier. It gives us a very comfortable workspace. Lots of room, lots of light. Coming here, it was the first time I had all my art around me, where I could finally make links between my painting, my sculptures, my installations. It made me rethink a lot about my work, very positively. For Camille Beaupin, it's her second time as an artist in residence. In 10 weeks of residence, I did 10 paintings. It was intense but necessary. It's important to step back from your work sometimes, but sometimes you just need to dive all the way in. For her, a residence is also a special time to share between artists. We have great discussions at dinner. Sometimes when you visit each other's workshop, we talk about our work and it pushes us further. Me, before I came back to a residence, I was only doing painting, but now I've started writing. And that's become as important as painting to me. And I only realized it by talking with other residents. The community comes together in this giant industrial space. Screen printing, casting, etching, woodwork. Here, the artists share tools and expertise among themselves, but also with people from the neighborhood. This is photosensitive liquid. We're going to apply it to the canvas. The association that runs the space, Curry Vavar, says its goal is to make creative workspaces available to everyone. If you want to make something, if you want to make art, we're a sort of resource to be able to do it, either formally through local associations or informally with neighborhood kids who come just because the doors are always open. That spirit extends beyond the walls of the Villa Belleville as it organizes a number of cultural and artistic activities, like the creation of these designs, painted by local youth that link the neighborhood's organizations in physical space through colors and symbols on the pavement. It was cool to put this on the ground. We don't normally get to do that. An artist's residence can tend to get very insular, but the goal here is to let people in and also to let artists out, to experiment in the neighbourhood, to interact with a public that doesn't necessarily have a strong link to contemporary art. Projects, colours, interactions, all aimed at making the City of Light a bit brighter. The Mona Lisa is known above all for her enigmatic smile, but that's not the only mystery surrounding Leonardo da Vinci's work. Another painting known as the nude Mona Lisa has long been the subject of speculation among experts. The drawing has never been formally attributed to da Vinci, but although some art historians say it does bear his hallmark. Now the findings of an investigation by the French Museum's laboratory are on show in Chantilly to the north of Paris. Marius Sophos takes a look. Nestled away at the Musée Condé, an art gallery in the Château de Chantilly, a new exhibition aims to prove that this charcoal sketch, after being shrouded in mystery for years, is indeed the work of the Italian master painter Leonardo da Vinci. Mathieu Deldic has led the investigation into this enigmatic work known as the nude Mona Lisa. We've recently carried out a whole range of scientific analyses and the results were astonishing. We discovered that this sketch dates back to da Vinci's lifetime, that it was produced in his workshop and that, because we found left-hand strokes, given that da Vinci was left-handed, the master most likely participated in the creation of this incredible work. Despite these new discoveries, experts are far from having unveiled all of the sketch's secrets. At the Musée Condé, the investigation continues with the help of artworks borrowed from Italy, England and Russia. 
The exhibition is like a police investigation. It's about evidence. So we borrowed an old copy of the Mona Lisa from the Louvre. It's there you'll find the origins of the nude Mona Lisa's composition. But we've also borrowed versions from all over the world that were influenced by the sketch. Notably, this one from the Leonardo da Vinci Museum in Italy, in the artist's hometown, which is directly influenced by our sketch. With the evidence in mind, then, what is the public's verdict? The mystery continues. In my opinion, it's by Leonardo da Vinci. Obviously, it's just my personal opinion, but I think that the mystery has truly been solved. Yes, this is da Vinci. Visitors to the museum have until the 6th of October to make up their minds over what secrets the sketch might hold. We're returning to Venice for the end of this show, where alongside the film festival, the city's also hosting the Contemporary Art Biennale. Artists from all four corners of the globe are showing work under the banner May You Live in Interesting Times, with pieces that explore social, political, environmental and philosophical questions using a wide range of media. Standout exhibits include American artist Khalil Joseph's hard-hitting video work, South African Zaneli Muholi's photography, an installation from Chinese artists Sun Yuan and Peng Yu entitled Can't Help Myself. This features a mechanism moving in an eerily human way, scooping up a dark blood-like liquid. And Laure Prouveau brought her trademark wit and playful sensibility to the French pavilion at the Biennale. We'll leave you with a clip of her video piece, Deep Sea Blue, surrounding you. Do remember you can get more arts and culture on our website and we're also on social media. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. <laughs> 